Hello everybody, this is the Crystal Manta here, and welcome back to episode 3 of the Zoodacy series. Uh, last video we made, we kind of started the hub area of the Worldly Woods, and we built a stroller rental building, and just got kind of everything set up for the hub. In this episode, we're actually going to become a real zoo now, because we're going to get some aminals. Uh... This is going to be our first actual habitat uh, for the hub. We're going to have two habitats for the hub area. Uh, this one is going to be the Terterrarium, which is going to be our turtle house. We are going to have two species in here. Uh, I'm going to save the Aldabra tortoises for the uh, for a future section of the zoo. This uh, house is going to be. Uh, Diamondback Terrapins from the exhibit animal from the aquatic pack as well as uh, Galapagos giant tortoises So this will have both an indoor and outdoor section the indoor section will be for the Diamondbacks and then the outdoor section will be for the uh, uh, Galops So I'm just kind of laying out the basic path of the uh, Again, I lose my train of thought. The basic path for the uh, Diamondback indoor section. You see me, I'm kind of I was kind of indecisive about what type of walls I wanted to use. I originally wanted to do kind of a tropical kind of theme. I wanted to use this bamboo to do kind of like an aquatic, almost like a, a fishing theme. Like I have like ropes and nets on the walls. But I ended up deciding not to do that. I just, I couldn't get it, it didn't look how I wanted it to look. And I, I it was more of a, it looks cool in, on paper kind of thing. So that was kind of annoying, but it, the way it ends up looking is, is pretty cool. So I'm satisfied with the final product. Uh, as you can see, I was having some issues with the terrariums actually fitting in with the path so I'm gonna build this and then make the path on the building grid and that should fix it. So I ended up going with this uh, kind of grayish boardwalk color. I think it ends up looking pretty cool and it still gives that kind of aquatic feel that I'm looking for. Now I will say that after I finished, the day after I recorded this gameplay, I did go back in and add some things. So like in future videos, we'll do like full zoo tours once we have a decent amount of content in the zoo. And you will see things in the Terterrarium that are not going to be shown on the footage here. Just added, mainly just added some decorations and just fleshed everything out a bit. Ideas that I had after I finished recording and it was like well, it's a bit late. I already recorded the gameplay for this But I will uh, once we get to sections where I do add things I will go ahead and explain what I added So here we're just adding uh, three uh, exhibits uh, Three uh, you know terrariums we're gonna have three diamondback terrariums I currently have it set in the zoo so that animals don't die. And I'm this is going to be temporary because of the way that exhibit animal breeding works. And the way that exhibit animal, terrarium animal breeding works is that they have very low population tolerances, like depending on the animal, but they have so many babies at a time that every time they breed they basically overflow their tank like the boa constrictors for example will only take us they can only give birth a single time before they're done and they hate their lives basically <laughs> now what I would like them to add is a sandbox option because you have the option to turn off births and deaths of animals I would like them to uh, make separate that between exhibit and habitat animals 
so that I could uh, make the populations for the exhibit animals static and then le leave the habitat animals to breed. But they don't have that yet. So what I'm going to have to do in the zoo until we get that is uh, set it so the animals can't die. They can still breed, but for the habit, the exhibit animals in the terrariums, I will only have animals of the same sex in a, a tank together, so they won't breed out of control. And for the habitat animals, uh, what I was, sorry, uh, divert. What I'm trying to do here is I was going to have like a little pool of water, and what I wanted to do was have a water tank and then just put a metal floor there so it looked shallow, just like it was a little fountain. But it ended up, nar ended up not working well, if I can talk, because it was just too close to the paths. And so that's why I gave up on that. But about the habitat animals, I'm going to only adopt those that I can buy with conservation credits so that I can... Uh, What's the... So I can release them into the wild if ever need be. Any animals that are born in your zoo you can release to the wild once they're adults. But those that are... Uh, you buy with... That you adopt with from the animal market with cash, you cannot. So I'm... Going to only adopt animals that I can make with... Or that I can get with conservation credits so that I always have the option to... Uh... Uh, release them into the wild so I can keep populations uh, kind of on track. Or not on track, I don't know, that was a random way to say that. In check. Especially because the Galapagos tortoises breed like rats. They have like... Uh, one of the things that happened after I finished building this was uh, they did give birth. And they had like six babies. So, uh, <laughs> they breed like crazy. So that's another thing that we're going to have to deal with. So right here I am uh, adding a power generator so that this whole section is self-powered. It is too close to the, uh, uh, what's it called? To the paths, and get, guests don't like to see, uh, what's it called? I keep losing my train of thought. That is a real problem I have in these videos. They don't like to see the employee buildings, which is weird because I think it's really cool. So you can see here that I'm having trouble because they're all just adopted for cash. But it doesn't really matter much because the exhibit animals aren't going to be breeding. But uh, guests don't like to see the employee buildings, so you have to keep at a certain distance away from them or they'll complain. So it is too close to the path right now, especially with how I want to build it later, so I do end up moving it to the ground as like a basement kind of thing. So here we're putting in the first Diamondback Terrapins and we're just kind of decorating the tank with various bits. And now I'm checking to see if guests are coming in, and they are. Now they, they don't really come too far, they turn around because the turtles aren't enough to satiate them. So as I tried placing them in the Turtorarium, but they immediately left again. They do start actually coming and having fun once I get in the torts though. The big boys, the absolute tort units. So right now I'm putting in a fake ceiling. I know I said in the first episode that I was going to do interiors uh, before I put in ceilings. So I sort of did that. I just moved the ceiling up. I just wanted to get it in place so I could see how tall the ceiling was going to be and everything. So right now we're going to build... We're building a little sign for the Terrapins that I thought would just be kind of cool. We're going to use this... We use up this uh, diamond glass pane... I think it ends up looking really nice and has definitely kind of an aquatic freshwater feel. So now we're going in to get the letters and we're going to spell out Terrapins. 
I only just managed to kind of get it to fit on the sign. As you can see, it's kind of going off the side here, so I do center it more. And it just kind of like barely fits. And then we also have it on the other side too and center that. And we have these turtle signs from the aquatic pack, but they don't look good there. So I end up finding a different use for them, and it ends up looking pretty cool. And then we end up, we're doing that right now. But I end up using, uh, I go back and try to use these bamboo walls, because I wanted to use them for the main inside of the wall, but I decided to go with a black wall, so it was like a darkened space. I think it ends up looking really cool, and we're going to put in our go. We're going to put in custom signs because one of the things they added. I, I maybe mentioned this last episode, but one of the things they added in the recent 1.5 update was uh, custom uh, like billboards and signs that you can add. And so I'm going to make some in Photoshop and then uh, put it on there. And so we'll have like information signs about the Terrapin, and I think it'll just be pretty cool. I was having trouble figuring out which sign I wanted to use. I ended up going with this size. I know there's a lot of blank space around it. But I found this uh, aquatic kind of sign border. I wish it didn't have the giant otter on it because there's no otters here. I wish there was a turtle version, but that's okay. And then I just kind of put a couple of these around uh, the inside of the building. I think I have three of them, yeah, right here. Now I'm taking these actual little information boards for the exhibit animals and placing them all around. So these will actually educate the guests. I don't think the uh, TV screens that I'm going to make will actually educate them. But these will, and I'm getting a bunch of notifications saying that the some of the signs are misplaced because the other two tanks don't have them in them. And I'm making this little speaker that will uh, just kind of give off an informational spe spiel about the Terrapins. They've said in a future update we're getting custom audio, so I may put custom... Uh, I may record custom informational spiels and play those over the audio. That'll be kind of fun, I think. My brother has suggested that he might be interested in recording some. The other thing they gave us was these, like, wall murals for, like, aquatic biomes, and I thought those might be kind of fun to put on the wall, just to, so not everything is pure black. And so I've also decided to put them on this wall, too. This uh, black wall that is uh, there. I wish I could speak English good, but I can't. Now we're going to finish up this little sign. We're just going to put some little plants here. Get some aquatic looking plants. And just kind of throw some tropical looking ones around. Just to make it look nice. I found these reeds that I thought would be kind of cool. Definitely makes it look kind of semi-aquatic. And I thought about putting these hanging vines here just because it would look nice. It's like a, a curtain that you got to push through, like a bead curtain. I've also found these roots that are pretty cool. I just kind of put them around here. At that point, I'm put a, I put a mechanic there because I realized I was hearing noises that the generator in the Tertarium was breaking down. So I was like, oh, wait, I don't have any mechanics yet, so I should go put one down. So I just put some benches and trash cans around just to kind of fill up the wall area and so people don't throw garbage on the, on the ground. Because like I said, uh, previous episodes, people love to... Uh, litter in this game. Put in a security camera so people don't destroy shit. Uh, 
Shouldn't have said that part. I might have to bleep that out. This is a uh, family-friendly channel. Destroy stuff. Here we're just putting some signs that say, uh, don't tap on the glass. You know, this is a... You don't bother the, the aminals. This is, that's not a good thing to do. So the interior is looking pretty good so far. Putting some, some torts in there, some more turts. Again, like I said, it doesn't matter if the uh, exhibit animals are bought with regular money. Because they're basically just gonna not breed anyway. So I don't need to worry about having or being able to release them into the wild if need be. They're just kind of be going to live there. So I couldn't see the turtles at first. So I was making sure it didn't glitch, but they are in there. They're just on land. So I think the interior is looking pretty good so far. I do uh, turn it to nighttime so I can put some lighting around. Put a light above each sign, and then some, uh, are on each corner he here of the grow bed thing. I say grow bed like this is Subnautica. So I think for right now, I think we're done with the interior. Right now we're going to work on the Galapagos area. And this is going to be an outdoor portion of the exhibit of the Tertarium. So we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna use a lot of the colorable aquatic rocks in this area because I think it will look really cool. And we're just kind of creating the path that's gonna take guests back to the hub. So now we're creating the, there's going to be kind of a moat between guests and the torts. So I do create a staff path that goes around the back of the exhibit. Because there's going to be a, technically a second habitat here. And I will uh, talk about that once we get to it. Because I think it's kind of a cool idea. So we're going to use these aquatic rocks. And just kind of make a tall walk, rock, a walk wall that's yeah, made out of noodles and soup. Uh, a rock wall just to uh, block off the path as a backdrop for the Galapagos exhibit. And I thought it'd be cool to make them like stark white or really light gray. It ends up having a cool kind of effect. It's very, it, it serves as a nice contrast to like the greens of all the foliage that we have in here. So I started to put this rock wall in right at the end and then I realized, oh wait, uh, I need to have the second habitat that we're, the second secret habitat. So I thought about putting it on this side, but I would have to move the uh, generator. But then I realized, oh wait, it's too close to the... Uh, it, that red circle is where people will stand on the other side of the wall and people will hate sensing the presence of the uh, a building. So this is the part where I decided, hey, I'm going to put it in a basement kind of level on the ground. And I think that ends up being the smart thing to do. So I create a little staircase. And there, and then we put some walls around it. Because it is still part of the building after all. But I think this was the smart thing to do. I end up not putting the second habitat on this side, so it ended up not being a big deal. But... I already did it, so whatever. Alright, so that's our generator needs taken care of. So I started to kind of try to formulate the second habitat 
but there just wasn't enough space for it over here. Enough... There wasn't enough space that I could put, like, a little section for the zookeepers to actually drop off the animals. I'm trying to make a floor, but there's just not enough terrain space where I have the door. So this area just kind of ended up being abandoned. And as I would find out later off camera when uh, I kind of need it, it's not enough space anyway. But the second exhibit, I'll just go ahead and say now, was going to be kind of a tortoise nursery for when the tortoises have their babies, they would be moved into this separate habitat. Because tortoises aren't really that, they're not really like paternal creatures any, you know, they're not maternal creatures, they don't really take care of their young. They just kind of bury their eggs in the sand and then be like, all right, I'm gonna be deadbeat now. So I figured, oh, it's not a, you know, that won't be a big deal. And it, some animal, some zoos will have like little nurseries like this where you can see, get a glimpse of like the baby animals being taken care of or whatever. So I ended up uh, making it on this side with a big building, but it ends up not being big enough. So off camera, I create like a little backyard area for the torts, uh, for the baby torts. Because it just, uh, it ends up not being big enough. They keep complaining, they kept complaining about space and then protesters showed up and it was a whole thing. So keep in mind that what you're seeing in this gameplay here is not the finished product. I do go back and edit some things and really uh, flesh out the... Uh, flesh out the... the nursery. I add some decorations to it. Probably when the hub area is done and we're ready to start the next area, probably after every land is complete, I will do a full tour video where we just a commentated like live tour video. Maybe I'll stream the tour and that way you guys can ask questions live. And then we can just kind of like go through the zoo and uh, just kind of show off everything. So here I'm putting in the keeper entrance and uh, filling in those spots on the side. I wanted to kind of hide the door so it is kind of behind a little... It's in a little alcove so that guests won't be able to directly see it. So as you can see, there's no female torts that are available for conservation credits, so I just start with a male. And then when I f finally get a female, uh, I will put her in, and then they can make some baby torts. So now here I'm putting in the rock wall for the uh, edge of the moat. Because that's definitely part of the whole thing, is that I'm using a lot of rock work and a lot of foliage. And now we finally have our male tort, but I'm going to finish this rock wall and then I think we start uh, fleshing out his exhibit a bit, decorating it. Just kind of placing some rocks around just to decorate it. Figured I haven't used those arches yet very much, so I'll just kind of throw one in there. It ends up looking pretty cool with all that I do with it. Throwing around some little piles of rocks and just fill it up space so it doesn't look boring. Alright, so now we finally have a real animal. And we're going to fix up his terrain. He wants a lot of sand and... Uh, dirt, so I'm kind of making little trails of sand, almost like little pathways to guide him around, if that makes sense. I saw that in old, like, Zoo Tycoon 2, uh, speed build videos that weren't commentated, where they would just use, like, certain terrains, like dirts, to kind of almost kind of make trails around the exhibit, and I thought it was a cool idea. 
So now we're just adding a bunch of foliage. I get up like right to his limit of where they stop liking foliage. Although the guests still kind of complain there's too much foliage here. Even though the animals are fine with it, so I don't really care about that complaint. Just trying to make it look lush because otherwise it just kind of looks barren and boring. But I think it ends up looking really pretty and I'm very, it's probably one of the exhibits I've made that I'm most proud of. Just kind of throwing a palm tree there to get some some eye candy up above. Some plants along the edges, along the back, at the base of the tree. Just kind of making it look lush and nice. Some of those roots. I found out that these roots uh, don't actually count towards the foliage count, which I think is nice. So you can just kind of throw them everywhere. And it kind of makes it look like they're breaking through gaps in the rock wall. I think it just looks really cool. So I'm just kind of throwing these around in corners and uh, put some vines there on that log. So I think that's it for foliage. <laughs> now we start putting in enrichment items. I put a little grass bed up there they can nap on. Uh, Here's a, I'm hiding a water pipe behind the rock. Here's another one hidden over here, so that's not super obvious to the guests. Put a little feeder ball there. Off screen, I do put a fence at the edge of the rock wall because the torts would accidentally push their, their ball toys over the side and they would just fall into the moat. So I ended up having to, uh, have to put a little barrier there, but that's fine. And so now we're putting a rock wall on this side. And I figured it'd be cool to just kind of cover the path in the rocks. So it's just like you're walking on rocks. I think it's just kind of cool. I think it, you can kind of see the ridges, but they get kind of covered up with fence, the I use the log fence that I've been using this whole time so that it kind of covers up those ridges on the side. So now you can see guests coming into the uh, Tartarium now that we've got an actual habitat animal to draw their attention. Not to say they don't care about the terrapins, but this is what really draws them in. So now we're starting work on the nursery. And the one that we build in this gameplay is pretty bare bones, I'll say. We do definitely add more. Uh, I do add a lot more off camera. Uh, just because it ends up not being big enough and I add some decorations like some cabinets and counters and to make it feel more lived in. So now we're just kind of putting the null barrier around. I love the null barrier. It is my favorite barrier. For those of you who don't know, the null barrier is kind of an invisible fence, but it doesn't actually keep animals from going through it. They can still walk out of it. It just kind of defines the boundaries of the exhibit so that the game knows how big the exhibit is. But you can use like architecture pieces and rock walls to kind of create natural barriers. So there's no actual fences on the Galapagos habitat, but I'm using the moat and the rock walls to kind of create natural barriers. I just think it's cool that they added that in so we don't have to use the actual barriers. I pretty much never use the actual barriers except when I think it looks good, which is rare. So now this is we're creating sort of the exit to the tertiarium section. I go over here and grab the, the log fence. And then uh, I just kind of make that the barrier. And again, I do add a, a little fence to the other side so the torts don't push everything off. Because I had that happen. I don't know if it happens on video. Maybe it will. 
I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was the uh, the dog ball feeder that the keeper is working on right now that they just kind of nudge and it just kind of rolls uh, accidentally. Just kind of accidentally rolls into the pit. And I figured, okay, that's not a sustainable thing. They're going to keep doing that. And I have to do something about it. <laughs> so right now we're just kind of blocking off the view with more rock walls. See, there goes there goes the ball. They just kind of knocked it into the pit. And so off camera I do put in a little... I just use one of the basic metal fences. Just... Uh, I didn't feel like using the log fence. I think I tried it, but it just blocked off too much of the view. So I just needed something to keep the uh, balls from rolling off. And now we have a female that we can put in there. And now we will have both uh, torts so they can breed off camera. Sorry, I didn't get that on, on, on the video. But uh, we'll see all that once we eventually do a, a zoo tour of this of the worldly woods. Because I have one more uh, habitat planned for this hub area, and that is going to be a, something I generally use kind of in all of my hub areas and all my zoos. I just think it's a good like starter off habitat, and that will be a lemur house, uh, probably on the opposite side or in a corner. I have some ideas for a pretty elaborate lemur house. Like I said, this zoo, I'm kind of just going crazy. Not really worrying about what the hypothetical budget for this would be. Just kind of making a an elaborate crazy zoo. I like to use these for the rooftops here. Just so like even plants are even growing on the building itself. I just think it's a cool visual that this is kind of a, a, a town, or it's like a, a little town and the forest merged together. And so this old version of the nursery is just kind of hidden behind the rock wall at all times, never to be seen again. I don't dismantle it, it's just kind of there. Which is kind of spooky in a way, but that's that's okay. We're just kind of finishing off that little tunnel there to the Galapagos area. Board off the thing so it's just there. I might put something in there in the old nursery just as a thing for people who download the zoo and look for it. Like a weird creepy easter egg or something. I don't know. I think that might be kind of fun. So now the outside of the building is really coming together. Tortoise Nursery, add that to the work zone. I have a work zone for the hub as a whole, but then each habitat is going to be a work zone. Because I just think, uh... If we had it part of the normal work zone, it probably wouldn't get touched as much, if that makes sense. Like... All the staff would be off doing other things in the worldly woods. So now we're also creating a rock wall for uh, behind the staff path. And here we're going to be putting another keeper hut in a vet clinic. It was tr it was kind of trouble getting to it to line up with the path, but I, I got it to work. It was annoying, but it, it worked out fine. Now we're just kind of going to, I'm not going to go too elaborate on decorating these little staff buildings because they're things that no one is ever going to see. I might decorate them a bit more later because I like to be thorough like that. But for right now on gameplay, on video, I just kind of give basic, uh, just kind of basic decoration, just putting some walls and some signs on there. I do put some foliage in to fill in that little gap between the building and the sign but nothing too extreme because it doesn't really need it 
And I'm just putting some roof eaves. That's a weird word, eaves. To call those things, the little things that hang off the side of the roof. I just think it's kind of a weird word. So now we've just got this little staff section. I'll put a little awning there. Again, it doesn't need to be too crazy. Just put some signs. Here are the vet clinic. The only building we need now is a quarantine, which we will have somewhere else in the hub. Now I'm just kind of putting some plants to fill in the gaps. Nothing too crazy. Kind of fill out the foresty feel of it. Mainly just... Uh, I wanted to put some plants, or I was going to put some bedding, that's right, in the nursery. But for some reason I couldn't put many enrichment, or like, feeding platforms down. I don't know what was happening. I think it may have been the, the floor. Because I put in, I cut out this little square of floor and leveled it a bit. And it did end up letting me put some stuff if it was small enough. Like I said, I end up creating like a little back door area, or backyard area behind the nursery, just to give the baby torts a bit more space, uh, just so they aren't super crammed into a tiny building. I figured it would be big enough because they're small and generally don't need a whole lot of space, but apparently I was wrong. So now we're just filling in the rooftops here, just putting some plants around, just kind of making it look lush. It doesn't really matter which ones they put in. Normally I would stick to like South American tropical ones because that's where the torts are from. But this is just kind of part of the worldly woods so everything can just be kind of mixed and mashed. Just trying to fill in the skyline is basically what's happening. This gap between the stroller rental building and the terrarium, I also put in a kind of a, a structure there just to block the view of the outside world. It doesn't really serve a purpose, it's just kind of there to keep guests from seeing the rolling <laughs> the rolling hills of, o of Illinois in the background. Or wherever we are, we're somewhere in like the Midwest or whatever. I don't remember where I put the zoo. I think I put it in... Maybe I put it in Indiana? I don't know. It, it's clearly somewhere in like the Midwest or something. So now I'm just putting some lights around in the corners. Uh, I'm using these butterfly lights from the South America pack. Just because I think they look cool. I put a purple one up here. Yeah, that looks nice. Uh, and then I was going to use those torches because they're South America, but I think they're a bit too cheesy, if that makes sense. So I thought about using those glowy ones, but I just used the normal street lights on the path because they didn't really need to go crazy with it. Putting some trash cans, uh, some of these aquatic benches that we have inside, just so the, the benches inside and outside are consistent, you know. And then I saw that these little like glass awning pieces and I figured I'd put them, uh, just kind of put three of them here just like in case it rains or something. And then I take some of these poles just as supports and then just kind of lower them, angle them like that. I think it looks pretty cool. So now I'm filling in the terrain with the moat here. Putting in some rock terrain. And I decided to name my male tortoise Master Ugwe. And if you get that reference, you're great. I'm going to try to use like pop culture-y names whenever it's appropriate. I didn't name the uh, female Galapagos on camera because I don't have any pop culture female Galapagos tortoise names but I ended up calling her Shelly off camera it's I don't know it just kind of worked out that way if you have any other Galapagos tortoise pop culture names be sure to let me know 
So this is going to be the Galapagos Breeding Nursery. I do change the font because so the letters are less chunky and they're easier to read. Like I said here, the those signs glow, the text does. I thought there was a way to make it so that the text doesn't glow if you set the light color to black, but apparently that doesn't work. So now I'm just filling in this space here on the rock with some plants. Just to make it look a bit nicer. I think it ends up looking looking pretty nice. Just kind of throwing stuff everywhere, it doesn't really matter. So now I, I saw a notification that I didn't have a vet, so I went ahead and threw one in there. Put some security guards because I didn't have any of those in there. And we need them to chase vandal, vandals and uh, like uh, uh, pickpockets, that's the word. I put some signs along the Galapagos area that say don't feed the animals, don't chuck your hamburgers over the side. We don't have any food stands yet, so I will have to do uh, fix that. I Probably next episode we're going to make a restaurant and a gift shop maybe. And then after that we'll do the lemurs. So we probably won't have two animal episodes in a row. Here I'm just changing some of the rocks to be darker colored just so it's a bit more interesting and less uh, like less uh, samey. So now we're going to do the uh, uh, ter terrarium sign. I know terrarium isn't a, a real word. It's more of a, a pun on turtle and terrarium. Maybe it's somehow a real word and I just don't know about it. I don't think it is, though. But we're just kind of putting the sign on there. Put some of these turtle signs on there. Make a little archway gate. It was sticking through. And then I noticed there was a big gap here that I had to uh, fill above the archway. Or it's because, uh, it's because the, not a gap, but the black ceiling was sticking through. But I went up, ended up fixing that. Just kind of put, trying to find a place for these turtle signs, just so it looks good. And then also putting some lights along the edges here. I thought about doing a little light thing there, but I decided to put the turtle sign. I think it ends up looking better there anyway. I tried to see if we had a turtle statue, uh, but we do not, so maybe a modder can do that. I don't know, I was going to put it in the garden out front. But so I think the building gameplay is almost done. I do put a little speaker here for the Galapagos tortoises, but I think the actual building time lapse is pretty much done at this point, other than me making some last minute plant add additions. So I think we're pretty much done here and then we will cut away to the full uh, tour of the Terterrarium. Again, not the finished version, but uh, we'll see that eventually. So I will see you then.
Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. If you want to see more content like it, be sure to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and ring the little bell to make sure you're notified of all future videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.